Level 3. Thank you for calling Migrant Advice Line. Your call may be recorded for training and quality purposes. I'm sorry, there is no one available to take your call at the moment. You are being held in a queue and we will answer your call as soon as possible. You ring the helpline listed on the letter, but are on hold for two hours. Your patience is appreciated. Please continue to hold and we will be with you shortly. They never pick up phones. No. Like, it's not never, never. It's like, um, maybe if you... Uh, keep calling hundred times, they will pick up one times and even... Your patience is appreciated. Please continue to hold and we will be with you shortly. So you have to sometimes wait hours and hours and the line goes off automatically and no one pays our phone bills. So, like, we don't have the means or we don't have the capacity to wait on a phone call for hours. At times people are in, in matters that they really need the urgent help, you know, so if we can access the help at that moment, it's, it's trouble. Your patience is appreciated. Please continue to hold and we will be with you shortly. You hang up and send an email to the address listed asking for advice and travel assistance for your appointment. You wait for two days and you still haven't heard back. Four days until your appointment. Suddenly, there is a knock at the door. Two men are at your door saying they've been sent by your accommodation provider. They tell you that they must secure your internet router. And I was like, what? When you ask why, why? they say it's to stop you and other asylum seeker from stealing the router. I felt like you don't even trust us with the most mundane things. If I told you don't trust me with the dongle, why don't you start by locking up the fridge and locking up the stove and locking up the kettle? Because those are the things that I use here every day. The mind frame of that person making that decision, they think that they're thieves and they're robbers and every opportunity they get, they're stealing things. Do you know what? You're not worth it and you're a thief. These uh, accommodation providers, they are private companies. Everyone, they thought that they were the home office and they were too terrified to speak with them, to talk with it's them. Not a one there are people who, when they share their stories, the housing officers, you wouldn't believe it. They tell them, oh my God, very nasty things. The asylum seekers are afraid. No, no, no. You know, maybe my case could, could be affected. The guy said to me, it's the home office, so you have to do it. You're always scared. You don't know what or how or, you know, what to expect from them. As an asylum seeker, you have like 20% of rights. Oh, I can't get a shower. Apparently, we are not allowed to have showers. Not having heating working is really common. Not have heating working. Well, the worst that I can say is, it's like, it's very terrorizing. It seems as if you're in prison. It's that constant proving yourself over and over again, but also in the same process, trying to build a life. And how do you build a life? While well, you really are building, you feel like you're building on quicksand. Because if you're not allowed to, to stay and to be stable, you are building on quicksand. Anytime that quicksand can just can take the house away. So I'm just too afraid to complain because I might be tagged as a complainer and put even in a worse state than I'm in. So you shut up and put up. It's lunchtime. You have run out of food for yourself and you are running low on baby food as well. It's time to go to the shops. Go and listen to Level 4. <laughs> 